Hey everyone, welcome to the series on range query problems and range query data structures. This is Karthik and in this video we'll be talking about what are range query problems, what are the type of range query problems and what are the type of data structures that are used to solve these problems efficiently and the techniques used. So first of all let's see what range query problems are. So a very common type of range query problem is that you're given with an array A consisting of integers a1, a2 up till an. So this is an array having n integers. You're also given q number of queries and each query is of a particular type. There can be various type of queries, type 1, type 2 and maybe more types. But we'll think of a very simple, uh, the most type, common types, okay. The most common type of range query problems are that there is just one type of query, t1. And that is of the form L comma R. And this is a range of elements. So L comma R would be 3 comma, maybe 3 comma 7. And that would mean the range of this array A from the index 3 till the index 7. So that would be A3, A4, A5, A6, A7. And you would like to find out what is the F applied over the range L to R. So F applied over the elements AL al plus 1 and so until a of r. This is one of the most common type of range query problems. Also usually there are two types of query instead of one. So q t1 and t2 and the second type is actually some kind of update that has to be performed on the array. That update could be point update which, which would mean hey change the element at the index i to some other value than what is currently there. That is a point update or it could be range update. Hey update all the elements in the range from L to R, maybe add two to them or maybe change all of them to zero. So this is some kind of types of query, but let's focus on one type. You are supposed to apply the function F on a range L to R. And because there is a range, these type of queries are known as the range queries because you will be getting a, various, uh, uh, a wide number of queries, each referring to a range of the given array. Also, it's not necessary that you will always be given an array. Your queries might be performed on a tree, a subtree, or a path in a tree, a graph. So let's stick to the basics. We are talking about one single array having n elements and we are trying to solve the query q that is apply the function f over a given range. Now what do I mean by applying a function f? That's the important thing. So applying a function f over the range from L to R. So this function f could be a variety of function that you will deduce from the problem statement. Most common is that f would be this function sum. So find out the sum of the elements in the range 3 to 5. So that would be a3 plus a4 plus a5 and that would be the answer to that query. Or it could be product. Or it could be min, max, anything, right? Mostly uh, when you go to code chef or code forces, you will find harder problems and the range, the queries would not be so straightforward, but we're going to stick to these for now. Now, as we saw that range, these type of queries would be range sum queries. You are trying to find out the sum of a given range. And if you think about it, you can actually solve these type of queries. Imagine that you had Q number of such queries, each of the form L1, R1, L2, R2, so until LN, RN, uh, LQ, RQ. These are the Q queries you have. You can solve each of these queries to find out the sum of these ranges by simply iterating through this particular range. Iterate the array from L2 to R2, find out the sum, iterate again. So you can actually solve these queries in O and Q time. But uh, obviously if I'm making this series, we are going to have something more efficient in all type of range queries. We'll try to make things more and more efficient as we move forward. So if you understand what range queries are, great, you can move ahead. Uh, if you want a bit more clarity, let me give you an example. Let's say you have this array 5, 3, 9, 6, 2 and 8. Okay, this is your array, 1 bit indexing and uh, the queries could be 2 comma 7, 3 comma 6, actually not 2 comma 7, let me make it 2 comma 4, 3 comma 6 and 1 comma 5. So maybe these are your queries. You'll have to answer these. 
So when I ask you 2 comma 4, you should give me see this is 2, 3 and 4. So you should give me 3 plus 9 plus 6 which is I guess 18. If I give you 3 comma 6 then this is the range I am talking about. You should give me the sum of all these elements. When I talk about 1 comma 5, you should give me the sum of these first five elements. Alright, so this is the type of problems. A given number of queries, apply a function f to a given range. Right, now hope that makes sense. These are range queries. There are two type of range, uh, query problems or two type of range query problems. So queries could be either offline or queries could be online. Now what's the difference between these two things? So by offline range queries, I mean that all the queries are given to you beforehand. So I have already given you, hey, the queries are going to be 2,5, 3,8, 10,12, 1,16, 1,20, 1,30. You already know what the queries are going to be. In online, it's a bit different. I give you one query and I wait for you to answer the query. So you will give me the answer here to this query. And only then will I give you the next query. So you don't know this query beforehand. Now you might think, hey, what's the difference? At the end, I'm answering the same queries only, right? So it should not make a difference, but actually it does make a big difference. Because if you've given the queries beforehand, you can devise some very clever methods of answering these queries in a very efficient manner. There is something known as Mo's algorithm, which applies only on offline queries and it's really very general thing. This technique is very generic and can be applied to a wide range of query problems. But those query problems should be offline. And online problems, you need to do something other than working on the queries. You cannot just be smart, uh, smartly sort the queries in a given manner and maybe optimize the solution. You need to think of other data structures when it comes in online queries. So these are a bit harder to solve. We will try to focus on both. All right. So if I were to give you an example of online queries, you can consider this. Uh, let's say 5, 3, 8, 2, 4. And I'm still talking about range sum queries. Okay. Let's say the first query is 2, 4. Next query is 3, 5. I give you these queries beforehand. But I tell you, see, first query is 2, 4. Find out the answer for this. Let's say it comes out to be A. Now, next query is not 3, 5. Make it 3 plus A and 5 plus A and now answer this query instead of 3.5 and whatever answer you get from here let's say maybe b for the next query add b to both l and r this is a very vague example this is not like you your l and r might become larger than n, uh, n or smaller than zero in this given example but this is just to give you an idea how people try to make online query problems okay this way you cannot work on the queries these are online query problems now these type of problems usually come with point updates and range updates. So, updates. Point updates would be, hey, update this particular index of the array to some other value. And range updates would be, hey, update this given range of the array to some other value or to this range, add something, multiply something, various things. So, they can be update queries also. Now this should be enough for introduction to range query. Let's see what are the type of data structures that are or techniques that are being used. Or basically there are a lot of techniques being used but the ones which we, we plan to cover. We plan to cover prefix arrays for sure. This is one of the easiest to understand and can be really powerful to solve a lot of problems. Actually not very powerful but you will find a lot of problems can be solved using prefix arrays. We will cover this. We also will try to cover segment trees. In segment trees, we'll try to cover both point updates and range updates. Apart from this, we'll cover Fenwick tree that is also known as binary indexed tree bit. We'll cover Mo's algorithm, which is a really cool technique and I actually love it. We'll try to cover it for both arrays and trees. And in trees also, you can apply Mo's algorithm for uh, path queries and subtree queries. We'll try to cover both. So apart from this, we'll also cover a few more things, namely square root decomposition. Now square root decomposition is again 
amazing it's one of the best techniques i have ever like studied or read it's really simple but at the same time quite powerful apart from this i'd also try to cover a few other techniques and structures you can give your suggestions too and i'll see you in the next video when we'll try to cover prefix series in as generic way as possible uh, make sure that you like the video here put in a comment subscribe to the channel and i'll try to bring the series out as soon as possible thanks for watching